Hello indie game fan, there's really not much coming out this week in terms of new releases, most likely due to the Steam sale, so that gives us some wiggle room to enjoy those newly bought games that you got on sale. If you're still craving for more though, here are just 10 indie games of interest, most of which are ports, but there are a couple of new games as well in this edition of Indie Gaming This Week. Let's begin with Elfadia Genesis 2, a JRPG title from Japanese developer AXE Create, who really has just been pumping these out and is the sequel to a game from 2015, set in the same world, although I don't think there's a direct story continuation. It's a very classic turn-based JRPG, where the PS2 era graphics in combat does seem wonderfully nostalgic. This did actually released on Steam earlier this month, but gets a Switch version this week. This will be wonderfully nostalgic as well, since Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol are being re-released on Steam and will scratch that nostalgia itch for those who grew up with these games. Enjoy making it. I hope that people enjoy playing it still. It comes to us from developer.emo, who have done a fantastic job with these classic IPs, so there's no reason not to trust them with this. A curious little game is Akan the Dog Adventurer, a platformer breakout hybrid, where our canine hero has to platform, avoid enemy projectiles, and to fire back in order to clear the level. To be honest, I do like Breakout or Arcanoid style games, but there are really a lots of clones that I skip over, where new mechanics in the space always interest me, so this gets a spot, also getting a Switch port this week. If you enjoy cute looking physics puzzle games, Stand By Me will be of interest, one that uses portals, magnets, and gravity to create effect. The cutesy aesthetics certainly help, where the puzzling looks decent, not super challenging, but it does at least make you stop and think, so do pick it up if it looks neat. Some of you may notice the similarity in visuals between Mighty Aphid and Moon Reader from last year, where indeed, it's from the same developer. This is actually a title which released on mobile in early 2020, preceding Moon Raider, where it looks to be a similar sort of action platforming fun. Me being me, I do like the pixel art which totally works for this type of game, where you're protecting your village from the villain and a swarm of dark monsters. If you're looking for a nostalgic sports title, Pixel Cup Soccer Ultimate Edition should be of interest, pitting nations against each other in the beautiful game, where it does give me vibes of FIFA 94, which I played so much of as a kid. This next one's interesting since Epistory Typing Chronicles is a typing adventure game where you explore a origami paper craft world fighting a corruption in the land. Most interestingly, this gets a Switch version which in my mind does not compute since the PC version has you typing out words on a keyboard where literally everything in the game down to the menus were via typing out the words, where this Switch version instead has you mashing on buttons like some sort of rhythm game or QTE simulator.
As such, I do think that some of the magic is lost, but kudos to the developers for trying to bring their game to a larger audience. Also of interest is its sequel, Nanotales Typing Chronicles, which you can get on PC. I mentioned Doki Doki Literature Club Plus when covering the IGN Expo for E3, where the fan favorite psychological horror title, wrapped up with a cutesy anime dating sim aesthetic, is getting an enhanced re release. It's very meta and disturbing, and not for the faint of heart, although I do wonder how it will play out given that the original has you messing with system files and this is launching on consoles as well. An awesome adventure game from 2020 is The Procession to Cavalry, one that uses renaissance paintings and the unexpected hilarity that comes from that, similar to images that you would find on r slash tripping through time or classical art memes. It's a Python-esque adventure, so expect plenty of silly jokes and dark humor, where developer Joe Richardson is a bona fide pro at this, having made four last things from 2017 as well, getting a Switch port this week. One of the most intriguing prospects, if it makes it to launch, is Imp of the Sun, a hand-drawn Metroidvania entry that is uniquely Peruvian in influence. This is a setting and folklore that is relatively new in games, we are trying to bring back light to the Sun's empire by defeating the Four Keepers. You know me, a fan of Metroidvanias, so of course I cannot say no, where apparently it's non-linear and you're able to tackle the bosses in any order. Sleek action and great art makes it of interest, although the developer isn't doing a great job at promoting the game with the nebulous release date. Still, probably the title of interest for the week, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump. Yeah.